In the words of the Joker in the Dark Knight, here we go. SEC Media Day is underway. The excitement for another season includes optimism for Florida's might losing Kyle Trask and Kyle Pitts because Emory Jones is still on campus. Over in the West Division, LSU quarterback Miles Brennan looking for a bounce back year after suffering a season ending surgery just three games into the season. Let's hear from both coach and their coaches, starting with Coach O. I don't know if we're going to see another Joe Burrow. I hope we do. I can't wait to see him. And I hope Max, Miles, or Garrett Nussmeier becomes like that. But the, the type of offense that we're going to run, uh, the style of offense in 2019, the type of checks that we had, the type of protections, that's the stuff I'm talking about now. Whether or not Max, Miles, or Garrett can run it like Joe, I'm not expecting that. But I want to see the same type of plays. I want to see the same type of adjustments that were so successful for us. Now, that doesn't mean that's the only thing we're going to run. But that is going to be the basis of our offense, which is a spread offense, which we learned under Joe Brady. You know, Emory's going to be more dynamic. He can, he can break you down with his legs, and, and he can a, a extend plays and, uh, you know, and create uh, with his athleticism. But, uh, you know, he, he's a guy that comes in. He's played a lot. He, he has experience. He's put up numbers in, in meaningful games in big situations in the past. Highly recruited guy that's really taking his time to learn the right way uh, and develop the right way that's going to be ready for his opportunity. Terrific tie from Dan Mullen there. And then I got caught trying to kind of talk like Coach O, leading to the sot from Coach O, and that's what I get for assembling on my words. Loadable returning quarterbacks uh, starting fashion in the SEC. You see the odds to win the Heisman Trophy, none shorter than JT Daniels at 12-1. to An interesting season, to say the least, for him last year, but he comes into this year as the guy in Athens. All right, time to check in with CBS Sports writers Dennis Dodd and Barrett Salee. They are at SEC Media Days in Hoover, Alabama. So, guys, let's talk about Georgia. Kirby Smart comes into these media days in terrific shape. The question always becomes, guys, is this the year he's got the quarterback to do it? Dennis, I'll start with you. Yeah, I was all over Georgia earlier in the year until Alabama got from the transfer portal Jamison Williams and Henry To'o To'o. That's not to say it's going to put them over the top. It just says that Alabama's not going to give this thing up easily. It's almost like the scene in The Untouchables, Barrett, where, you know, if they bring a knife to a fight, you bring a gun. <laughs> if, they, if they put one of yours in the hospital, you put one of those theirs in the morgue. But this season and the SEC comes down to that game, I'm just not ready to go there uh, whole hog. Well, I am because okay. I think Georgia wins the SEC and gets to the playoff and potentially wins a national championship. JT Daniels, I think, one of the best quarterbacks in the SEC, obviously not as experienced as Matt Corral, but they've got a great running back room. I think the wide receiver question, a little bit overrated, and we know about that Georgia defense. It is absolutely fierce. So when you look at that, combine it with the schedule, they get Clemson in the opener. Outside of that, it's pretty darn easy for Kirby Smart and the Bulldogs. So getting to Atlanta, I think, should be a breeze. But as we've seen, this offense, after JT Daniels became healthy last year, it really took off. Todd Munkin was hired as the offensive coordinator to revolutionize the offense. He really couldn't do that until the final month of last season. And by that point, the division was pretty much lost. So, yes, I do think it's the Bulldogs' year. They make it to Atlanta. I think they win in Atlanta. And as far as the national championship goes, I think they have a real good shot. All right, so Barrett Bullish on Georgia, by the way, plus 250 to win the SEC. Second best odds only behind Alabama. Bama coming in at minus 140. Guys, let's talk about Tennessee. In most years, they like to think they're up there with the Florida, LSU, Georgias, <laughs> and Bamas. Josh Heupel's there now. The era begins there over in the UT. Now, Barrett, give me a sense of what they're going to be like, you know, offensively, defensively, and the level of excitement that you're going to hear from their fans this season. Well, patience is a four-letter word on Rocky <laughs> Top because they've been patient for way too long. But I think they actually will follow through with that patience this year. It'll be like the Guns N' Roses song because, let's be honest, when you bring Danny White over from UCF, obviously he has Josh Heupel. He knows him. I think you're going to see those two work together. You're not going to see some sort of hasty uh, coaching change if things don't go well after a couple years. And, look, they know that roster is depleted. When it comes to, to, to comparing that to Georgia and Florida, it's like the Grand Canyon. So I I think they understand, hey, this time, patience is a virtue as opposed to the last six or seven times when I think they were a little uh, little bit too uh, a little too much too soon, so Yeah, to speak. Tennessee fans don't want to hear patience for the 12th consecutive year, yeah. but 
they're going to have to be patient because this Tennessee team is going to be entertaining. They're going to score more. I don't want to say they're going to score a lot. But they're going to give up a lot, too. And until Josh Heupel has his system and his athletes in there, it's going to be a little bit tough. They're not going to average 30. They have to find a quarterback because nothing starts in this league until you do. Um, and that's where it goes. You know, Josh Heupel it was hired for two reasons. He's a quarterback maker, and he's an offensive coach. Everything else is secondary right now for Tennessee, I think. Yeah. So for day two, guys, we're also going to hear from Lane Kiffin. You mentioned Matt Corral, another season there on campus. It's a tough division, of course, out there in the SEC West. I know where Barrett stands, so Dennis, I'm going to give you first word because I'm curious to think about <laughs> what you think they can do schedule-wise and maybe give one of the big guys in the division a big fat L. Well, if they get, if the offense gets close to average, they're not going to be average because they're, they were so bad last year. I think yard-wise maybe worse than in FBS. But if they get close to average, I think they can win eight games. Given that offense, Matt Corral is the leading returning rusher, excuse me, passer in the SEC. The last two guys to hold that title were picked fourth and fifth in the draft. Talking about not bad. Tua and Kyle Trask. And I'm not saying Matt Corral is going to do that, but he's got the coach in the offense to do it. And obviously the receivers. I saw Braylon Sanders this summer in the offseason. He's fantastic. He's going to be a go-to guy. So I think it all rests on the defense. We can all make you know predictions about the offense because it's going to score but they need a stop a stop <laughs> just one or two. just one it's like basketball no i think Ole miss is the most dangerous team in the sec because of what you said their offense can score 45 40 50 points on pretty much anybody we saw that against alabama last year now they might give up 55 or 60 right. but like you said it's basketball on grass for Ole miss that's what lane kiffin wants to do he's built that that program to a point where that's what they expect to do but yeah if they just have a middle of the road defense they're going to be really good. They're not going to have that kind of defense consistently. But the right team, the right game at the right time, they absolutely can. And I think will spring an upset on one of the big boys. Love it. Also, Mark Stoops of, of Kentucky will also be talking to you. Before I let you guys go quickly, how close are we this year to sort of pre-COVID times with media days? Give me a sense of where you guys are at right now. It's, it's a little bit more subdued. Um, you know, uh, mask optional for those of us that have been vaccinated. Less people in general. We're not getting the one-on-ones that yeah. we do after the coaches are up at the podium. But I, I'd say more subdued. Yeah, more subdued. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that there are no lobby lizards down there in the <laughs> lobby, no fans. So everyone seems a little bit more relaxed because you don't have to fight through the masses just to get out of this place. So, yeah, it's, a little, it's not as much of a circus. I know it's still a little bit of a circus because, let's be honest, this is more of a convention yeah. than it is. Is an actual media event, but uh, certainly a little bit more subdued than normal. Where's right. Ringman? Ringman, he's not yeah, here. Ringman and the, <laughs> and the guy that paints his dog orange exactly. and blue. Ringman, Lobby Lizards, and two movie references in this segment. We've got it all covered on CBS Sports HQ. <laughs> Our thanks to Dennis Dodd and Barrett Salee. Guys, appreciate it. Thank you. Want to let you know about the Cover 3 podcast. Underrated storylines for this season. Penn State's bounce back and year two coaches and more. The guys talk about under the radar college football teams and this preview Big Ten with Ohio State. All that and more download and follow today. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.